Welcome back to the hsebox.com channel. This is a series of videos in which we answer 10 questions related to health, safety, and the environment. Please subscribe to our channel and enable the notifications bell so you can be alerted whenever we post a new video. In this video, we will talk about 10 questions and answers related to confined spaces. Let's get started. Question number one, what is a confined space? A confined space is an area that is substantially enclosed, though not always entirely, and where there is a risk of serious injury from hazardous substances or conditions, such as entrapment, engulfment, or asphyxiation due to a lack of oxygen. Confined spaces can include, but are not limited to, storage tanks, boilers, pipes, sewers, vats, and other tight spaces. Before we continue, we have a question for you. What is this? And, what is its use for? Leave your answer in the comments section below. Question number two. What are some health, safety, and environmental hazards associated with confined spaces? Health, safety, and environmental hazards associated with confined spaces can include oxygen deficiency, hazardous substances, combustible or explosive atmospheres, extreme temperatures, high noise levels, electrical hazards, and mechanical hazards. Additionally, confined spaces can present risks to workers due to their size and the difficulty of exiting the space in an emergency. Question number three, what are the most important safety measures to be taken when entering a confined space? The most important safety measures to be taken when entering a confined space include testing the air for oxygen levels and hazardous gases, wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, and having a rescue plan in place in case of an emergency. Additionally, workers should be trained in safety procedures and protocols specific to their particular confined space. Question number four, what are the requirements for monitoring the atmosphere of a confined space? The requirements for monitoring the atmosphere of a confined space include testing for oxygen levels and the presence of hazardous gases and vapors. Additionally, the temperature and humidity of the space should be monitored to ensure that it is within safe ranges for the task being performed. Question number five, what are the requirements for ventilation and extraction of air from a confined space? The requirements for ventilation and extraction of air from a confined space depend on the type of task being performed and the type of hazardous substances present. Generally, ventilation and extraction of air should be sufficient to keep the atmosphere within safe levels and to prevent the buildup of hazardous gases and vapors. Question number six, what are the requirements for the use of personal protective equipment? PPE in a confined space. The requirements for the use of PPE in a confined space depend on the type of task being performed and the type of hazardous substances present. Generally, PPE should include safety goggles, hard hats, respirators, gloves, and other protective clothing, depending on the hazards. Additionally, workers should be trained in the proper use and maintenance of PPE. Question number seven. What are the requirements for a confined space rescue plan? The requirements for a confined space rescue plan include the designation of a qualified rescue team, appropriate training for the team, the use of proper rescue equipment, and the development of a detailed emergency response plan. The plan should also include provisions for emergency medical treatment and evacuation in case of injury. Question number eight. What are the requirements for training workers who will be entering a confined space? The requirements for training workers who will be entering a confined space include instruction on the specific hazards of the particular confined space, the proper use of PPE, and the specific safety protocols and procedures that must be followed. Additionally, workers should be trained in emergency evacuation and rescue procedures. Question number nine, what are the requirements for the use of safety harnesses in a confined space? The requirements for the use of safety harnesses in a confined space depend on the type of task being performed and the type of hazardous substances present. Generally, workers should be trained in the proper use of safety harnesses, and a qualified supervisor should be present when they are used. Question number 10. What are the consequences of failing to comply with health, safety, and environmental regulations in a confined space? The consequences for failing to comply with health, safety, and environmental regulations in a confined space can include criminal penalties, fines, civil liability, and other legal action. 
Additionally, workers may be subject to injury or illness due to exposure to hazardous substances or conditions. And employers may be liable for any resulting damages. We hope that this video gives you a better understanding of health, safety, and the environment. If you have any queries, please leave a comment, and we would be glad to assist you. Check our website and our channel for more health, safety, and environmental topics. The link is in the description. Never forget health, safety, and environment are everyone's responsibility. Stay safe always. Bye-bye, see you in the next video.